So I heard you. A lot of you complained in my previous vertical graphics card case mod video that there was a much simpler solution out there that I seemingly overlooked. That company, Cooler Master, creates this bracket here. This is a vertical graphics card bracket and it's uh, actually very well made. It's super simple in design, but it does exactly what it's intended to do. Allow you to mount your graphics card vertically and with their included riser cable, which I'll get to in a second, uh, you can have a fully functioning graphics card that looks something like this. So we're gonna talk about the installation process, my personal thoughts on, uh, on this bracket here, what I had to do to get this to fit into my case, the cutting that I had to do. Yes, there is a bit of that involved but look i mean come on that's pretty sweet anyone who knows computers are going to ask you what on earth you're using to get your graphics card to sit like that and i think it looks pretty darn good so let's get started The Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900 White Edition is the definition of both function and form. Wireless charging, case inversion, and insane water cooling headroom make it one of a kind, or one of 2000, because that's all Be Quiet's offering. Click the link in this video's description for more details. So the tools you are going to need. First up, Phillips head screwdriver. I recommend a magnetic one. You're gonna need this for really any PC building, maintenance, whatever you can think of anyway. So you should have one of these already on hand. Now you're going to need also a pair of either wire cutters or if you wanna get fancy with it, a Dremel to drill through the PCIe slot frames at the back of your case. Now a big heads up here. If you have a case that does not have seven slots, you need to pay close attention to what I'm about to say next. This is a seven slot bracket, which means that it will fit in any mid-sized tower with seven PCIe slots perfectly. Now if you have a full size tower with maybe eight slots or nine slots or whatever, you're gonna have extra slots at the bottom of your case or at the top depending on how you want to arrange this it would make more sense to have this bracket at the at the top though because you're going to be able to screw in your graphics card from above uh, so you're going to have extra slots below if you have a full-size tower and then if you have something smaller than a mid-sized tower so maybe a micro atx or an itx chassis this bracket will not fit period now on to the cutting process i'm going to assume that you have a mid-sized tower which means that you're going to be taking up all seven of those pci slots with this bracket here you won't have any extra slot laying around the cutting is going to involve these little frames here for each of your pci slots you're going to want to cut through every single one of these from left to right just get rid of all of them some people just cut the space where the new bracket uh, where the new card is going to sit but i just recommend cutting all the way through it's not going to change the structural integrity of your case and it'll make things look a bit more clean back here again this is where a dremel would really come in handy if you want to get fancy with it and keep things nice and clean back here using a pair of wire cutters is going to result in some splitting uh, maybe some paint chipping off again you're not going to look at your case from the back very much so it's not going to matter to most people but if you want a clean finish then use a dremel instead now once all six of those frames are removed, the next thing I recommend doing is installing your graphics card in the bracket outside of the case. It's gonna make things a bit easier coming from the top down, especially if you have your CPU cooler already installed going to be a bit difficult. Also, this will give you time to secure your riser cable. If you're using the one that's included with Cooler Master's bracket, things are pretty straightforward. You can secure it directly to the frame, although any riser cable is going to be pretty sturdy. I use Thermaltake uh, riser cables because I see literally no performance degradation with these. They're pretty expensive. Uh, I've linked them in the description if you're interested. These are just the ones that I personally use because I see no uh, frame rate dip at all with the riser cable versus plugging the card directly into the motherboard. In some cases, like in my case three times cooler master sent these brackets without any riser cables at all so i had to email them and ask them what was up with that like they expected me to have riser cables laying around which i guess to be fair is what i assumed you would have in my previous video so just play it safe make sure that this comes with one if you buy one otherwise go with something like the thermal take riser cable like i said it's a bit more expensive but it works really well so regardless of which cable you opt for have all of that pre-installed outside of the case once the card is installed in the bracket and the pci riser cable is installed into the card from beneath go ahead and plug in the riser cable directly into that uppermost 16 lane slot on your motherboard and then slide the bracket into place as you would any regular graphics card. There are two places to secure thumb screws on the right side of the bracket when looking at the case from behind, so you can keep the bracket nice and sturdy, and then of course you can secure the card itself 
via the two screws now turned upright. It's really that simple, just a bit of cutting, that's it. I was even able to still keep and use the Fantex kind of rear slot cover thing that slides back and forth. If you have a Fantex case, you know what I'm talking about. I could still use that to keep things nice and clean back there. Uh, and the card is functioning properly. Now the fan's not turning because I forgot to connect the fan when I put that cooler back on the PCB. Yeah, I gotta go fix that. But everything else, working really well. And I've actually used the Thermaltake riser cable with other cards in the past, uh, and that's how I know how good that thing is. I tested that with multiple riser cables actually because I was really impressed with how good it was. And I think from now on, what I'm going to do when I want to mount a vertical graphics card is use this bracket from Cooler Master. It's, it's really simple. Like you, you would think that other people would just catch onto this and, and do it and, and offer it. But Cooler Master has nailed it here, and as long as you get the riser cable included or have one on hand, then you're going to be able to use your graphics card the same way you'd be able to if it was just plugged directly into the motherboard without any performance degradation at all. Look, I don't really know why it's such a big deal to have your card turn this way. I think that the bottom of the card, this side here, just, well, it's hot. Yeah, I should probably turn the fan on. I, I think that it just looks much more clean when it's sitting upright because you can see the fans. It, it looks a little bit weird here with the blower style card, but if you had a card with maybe two or three fans on it and you had it turn this way, it would look pretty sweet. So if you like this design, maybe you like the setup, like what Cooler Master has to offer, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. I'm sure they will as well. Click the subscribe button for more content like this. Stay tuned for some tests with the i5-8600K. Very interesting stuff coming here soon to the studio. This is Science Studio. Thanks for modding with us.